Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to finish up all of the features that were in the original Utopian Rocks application. The two main features that we're looking for are this countdown timer right here, and then this number right here. And we're going to put them down here on the bottom app bar. Now before we get into the code, I kind of need to explain what that countdown timer is and what the other number is. With every Steemit account, you have what's called your vote weight. The vote weight is given in a percentage. And you can see here that the Utopian IO account's vote weight is currently at 91.23%. As your vote weight goes up and down, the amount that a vote from your account is worth goes up and down as well. The bot that actually votes on the contributions only votes on the contributions once the account's vote weight has hit 100%. So this countdown timer is basically an approximation about when the bot should start to vote. And then the number next to it is the current vote weight. So in 10 hours, this vote weight should get up to 100%. And then when it does, it will then go and start to vote through all of the contributions that are in the current batch. To implement these features, we're going to have to use yet another API, the API being the Steemit API. Though there are only two fields that we really need from this bit of JSON. We want to get this voting power field, which we use to actually calculate the percentage voting power. And there are various calculations that we need to run it through to get that number. And we also need this other field called last vote time, which is a timestamp which we can use to derive the actual time that it will take for the account to get up to 100%. The raw JSON is pretty easy to navigate. It's literally just a JSON object and then everything is inside of this user key. So we really just need to unwrap user and then grab the two keys that we want. So let's go ahead into our model.dart file and create a new class, which we're going to call Steam Response. This will have our last voting time and then our voting power field. The last voting time field is a string. And then voting power comes in as an integer. We'll also, of course, create the constructor. And then, of course, create the named constructor, which takes in our JSON map. And then finds the JSON fields through their respective keys. Now that we have our model set up, let's go ahead and create the actual Steam API class. So again, this is inside of our models folder. And we're going to need to import Dart Async, Dart Convert, the HTTP package with the client being exposed. And we also, of course, need to bring in our model file. Like with our other APIs, let's set up the client and then the actual URL that we're going to go and grab our JSON from. So the client just needs to instantiate a client. And then the URL will be a static constant string. And we'll point it towards steemit.com at utopian-io.json. We're going to need three more static variables inside of this class. And this will make a bit more sense when we actually build out the logic for the class itself. We're going to need a double called total vote power. Then we'll need a steam response, which we'll call the response itself. And then we'll need a duration, which we'll call date time. We can now create a function called get response. This will be a void function, meaning it won't actually return anything. Instead, we'll take the response and we'll put it into our static variable called response. The main reason why we're doing this is so that we can limit the amount of HTTP responses that we actually send over to the API. Because we're sort of making a timer, it makes no sense to pull the API every second to increment the timer itself. So instead we can just get the JSON and convert it into a Steam response and then have it be a static variable so that it will be the same across all instances of the Steam API. Like with all of our other APIs, we just call to our client. We're going to call a get method. We need to parse the URL by using URI.parse. 
Then we're going to get the response body and pass it through the JSON decode function. And then we grab the JSON map and we call steam response from JSON. And remember the overarching JSON object is this user key. So we just want to strip out that part of the JSON. Now we can create two functions. One of them will be called calculating vote power. It will take in an integer and then pass back a double. And then the other one will be called get recharge time, which again will take in an integer. And this one will pass back an integer rather than a double. Most of the actual calculation is going to occur inside of this function down here. And then we're going to pass the result of that calculation to this static variable, which then gets pushed into this function. With this calculating voting power function and also with the get recharge time function, the variable that we're passing in here is actually going to increment from zero all the way up one number every second. So what we can do is we can say every two minutes, which is 120 seconds, we want to call the get response function, which will then of course get the response and put it into this static variable. Now down here, we just want to check to see that the calculated VP, which we have in this static variable, if it's greater than 100, then we want to return 100.00 because our vote power can't be above 100. Otherwise, we'll just return the actual vote power. Down here in the get recharge time function, we're going to do most of the calculations. But first, we want to get a duration. So again, like we did up here, we're going to update this duration every 120 seconds or two minutes. And we want to update it if date time is equal to null so that we don't have null by default. We just say date time now to UTC. And this gives us a timestamp from our current moment. And then we want to take the difference from this timestamp with the timestamp that we get in from the Steemit API which is this last vote time timestamp. And of course, we need to convert the last vote time into a date time. So we need to call date time parse on it. This will give us back a duration, and then we can put it into our date time static variable. Now here's what the actual calculations look like. We take our duration and we convert it into seconds. Then we want to multiply it by 10,000 and then divide it by 86,400 and then divide all of that by five. This gives us what's called the regeneration vote power. We can then use that regeneration vote power to actually calculate the total vote power number. We add the two together and then we divide them by 100 and this will give us the actual percentage. After we get the total VP, we want to subtract it from 100.0 and get the missing VP. And then we want to check to see if the missing VP is less than zero and if it is then we'll just return zero otherwise we want to take the missing vp multiply it by 432,000, then multiply that by 100 and then divide this by 10,000, and then subtract our counter which if you remember our counter increments from zero one two three four like that and it'll keep going up based on the amount of seconds that have elapsed and what this calculation will do is it will give us the amount of seconds. Now there is one minor issue with this function and that has to do with how the function recalculates this date time duration every two minutes. What will essentially happen is when it calculates this difference in value, the incrementer that we're using here will continue to increment up and will actually lose one or two minutes depending on how far down it goes. So when x equals 120, which is two minutes, this date time gets recalculated and it uses the now current date time, which is two minutes later than the original date time calculation. And if the counter is say like 120, then that means that we're going to lose two minutes in the calculation of the new duration. With this new counter, we account for that 120 second discrepancy. And so when we get up to 120, it resets to zero and then it goes from one all the way back up to 120 again. Anyhow, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Let's now move on to the actual block for this API. 
This block we'll call the steam block. And again, we'll put it in our blocks folder. We want to get Dart async. We need Rx Dart. And we're going to, of course, need our steam API. In this class, we can set up the steam API. And then we want to set up the two streams that we're going to use. Now, in this case, I'm using stream controllers rather than normal streams. I'm doing this to kind of show you guys an alternative way of implementing the streams inside of a block. So a stream controller actually has a stream sync attached to it, and it also has a stream attached to it. So what we can do is create a observable, pass it into the stream controller through the sync, and then access that observable through the stream portion of the stream controller. Our vote counter stream controller will be of type double, and then our timer stream controller will be of type integer. We of course want getters so that we can get the actual stream value for these two controllers. And then of course we also want to set up a dispose function so that we can actually properly close these two stream controllers. Let's go ahead and set up the actual block constructor and pass in the API. And now rather than saying vote count equals observable and then whatever implementation that we need, we can say vote count sync add stream. For the vote count, we're going to start out with an observable periodic. What this does is it gives us our incrementer. So we specify a duration, which in this case will be one second. And then it will run this function every one second, with x being the value of the incremented number, starting from zero and then adding one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. We can, of course, map over these numbers using the asynchronous map function. And then we can pass in a closure where we take the x and then we pass it into our API calculate voting power function. And then naturally we want this to be a broadcast stream. So we need to chain on the as broadcast stream part at the end. The observable for the timer sync is going to be exactly the same, except instead of calling the calculate vote power function, we're going to call the get recharge time function with X inside of it. So the X coming in from the observable periodic will allow us to decrement the actual timer by a second. And then every 120 seconds, we'll recalculate to re-estimate the actual timer duration. And we'll do the same for the actual vote power. And of course, we could change this to say 30 seconds or we could change it to a minute. I'm just using two minutes for now so as not to use way too much data and way too much memory. That's it for the Steam block. So now let's go ahead and implement the front end for this block so that we can actually see the timer and the vote power. Before we work on the user interface, we need to bring in the initL library because we're going to use this library to format the seconds that we're getting in from our timer stream. So you just add it to your dependencies in your pubspec YAML, and the current version is 0.15.7. Now let's go into our main.dart file. And we're going to take our provider, and we're going to take our block provider and wrap it around this bottom bar widget so that we can access the block inside of the bottom bar widget where we need it. Let's go ahead and import our Steam block and our Steam API so that we can access them inside of this main file. And now we can wrap the bottom bar inside of our block provider with the Steam block inside of it. We define the builder function. If the block is null, then we want to instantiate a new Steam block with the Steam API inside of it. And then of course we want to define the dispose function where we just call block.dispose inside of it. Now let's go into the bottom bar file and let's import initl, our base provider, and then the Steam block file. Inside of the build function, we can now call provider of steam block and pass in the context to get our steam block. And then down here inside of the row, we want to add two stream builders before our actual category menu. Both of these stream builders will build out a text widget. The first one will be our timer, and then the second one will be the actual vote count. 
For the first text widget, we want to create a little string. We're going to start by saying next vote cycle. And then we're going to use string interpolation to call to our library so that we can actually format this string so that it will look appropriate for our timer. And this actually is from the initl library that we brought in here. So we can use a object called date format and we want to format the actual date time starting with hours, then having minutes and then having seconds. So we use this HMS method to do that. And then we can call format and inside of format, we need to pass in a date time object. Now the date time object first takes in years, then months, then days, then hours, then minutes, and then finally seconds. So we pass in our timer snapshot dot data because it's in seconds. We want to check to see if it's null and if it's null, then we'll just pass in zero. Otherwise we want to show this as seconds and pass it into the date time object. We want this text to also have some style. So we'll put in a text style widget and we'll pass in font weight of W 700. Now, if we open up our application, you can see here, we now have our timer and it says next vote cycle followed by the actual timer. So currently we have nine hours, 17 minutes and three seconds, and it's counting down one second at a time. The vote power string is a little bit easier to understand. First, we start with vote power colon. Then we use string interpolation to pass in our vote count snapshot data. And we want to see whether or not this is not equal to 100.00 or null. And if that comes back as true, then we take our vote snapshot data and we want to convert it into a string with a precision of four. Because remember, this is a double. The amount on the decimal point could be fairly large. We only need two decimal spaces, so we can just say that the number will have four digits. Now, if this entire piece comes back as null, then we'll just put in zero. And if this conditional here comes back as false, then we're just going to put in 100.00. And actually, I'm going to make this 0.0, .0 so that it looks a little bit more consistent. So now you can see at the bottom of our bar, we have the timer and now we also have the vote power, which is currently at 92.29%. Before we finish up, we need to fix up the format of all of this because it looks a little bit squished together. So let's format the row. We'll make it so that the main axis uses space around and then the cross axis will center everything. So now you can see each of the elements has a nice bit of space between one another. I'm also going to come down here to the padding and I'm going to change it from only left 12 pixels to symmetric horizontal 1.0 pixels. And this will kind of make things look a little bit more even. So now we have the actual timer and we have the vote power. If we want, we can compare them with the Utopian Rocks website. You can see here that the amount of seconds is slightly off and the vote power is slightly off as well. But this is mainly due to minor decimal point issues and the difference in how we're calculating things. And actually, I'd say that our vote power is slightly more accurate. You can see here that if we go to Steam World, the actual percentage is 92.37, which we have on our application as well. Whereas back in the Utopian Rocks application, it's still showing us 92.35. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.